Okay, welcome back. We're talking about Bare Metal Restore. Bare Metal Restore is faster. It contains the operating system and it's, it's already up to date. It's already been patched. It already has, it's already attached to the Active Directory. It already has the accounts. It already has the configuration. It already has the software. It's already configured. You don't have to do anything, which is kind of cool. So let's talk about the backup types. And by the way, there's one heck of a lot of, of good test questions coming out of this section. So pay attention. There's one called a full backup. And a full backup basically sounds like it says, I'm backing up absolutely everything and putting it on you know, some sort of media. And then a differential backup. So differential backup basically says, I'm, I'm backing up everything that has changed uh, since the last full backup. So the way it typically works is, let's say you did a, a full back on, backup on, in the middle of the night on Sunday. Okay, one o'clock in the morning, you did a full backup. And then Monday, you would just do it, whatever has changed since then. Okay, kind of makes sense. But whatever has changed since then is kind of going to grow on time. You know, Tuesday, it's going to be a little bit more, and Wednesday's going to be a little bit more, right? Okay, cool. And then the, the third type is called incremental. And incremental basically says, I'm going to do a full backup, and then I'm going to do whatever has changed from any backup, not just changed from the full, but changed from any backup, which means it's going to stay relatively small. Now, I've got a picture here show how this works. So here's a, a typical backup strategy with three different techniques. One would be I do a full backup every day. So 20 is just arbitrary. This could be like, I don't know, the amount of time. So Sunday, I do a full backup. So And then Monday, I do a full backup. And Tuesday, do, 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 straightforward, right? A full plus differential, which means I do a full backup on on Sunday, the orange one, and then I, it, it's going to grow a little bit. Monday has a little bit, but and then this is all the changes from Sunday. This is all the changes from Sunday. This one's all the changes from Sunday. So you can see how it kind of ramps up a little bit. And then full plus incremental, which means I start with a full backup, and then it only those things that have changed since the last day. So this would be the changes that happened on Monday, the changes that happened on Tuesday. So it stays relatively same. Now, let's look at this for a minute and answer the following questions. Which is the, the quickest, the fastest, and uses the least amount of media to perform a backup? Which one? Well, let's assume that we're gonna. It's gonna take. Let's, well, uh, let's. We're, we're gonna assume it's gonna take seven tapes. So the number of tapes doesn't change. Which one is gonna run the fastest for the backup? Well, it'd be that full plus incremental, wouldn't it? Right? Because a full on Sunday and then just a very sh short amount of. of of time it takes to, to do an incremental, right? Cool. Which is the one that uses the least amount of storage? Well, it'd be the same thing. It'd be the full incremental. Use the least amount of storage. Which is the one that gets bigger over time? Ooh, that's the differential one. And which of these is the quickest to do a restore? Ooh, okay, here we go. Let's say we had a catastrophic failure on Friday, okay? So, this is done at one o'clock in the morning and Friday afternoon we had a failure. How many tapes would it take to do a restore if I was using a full backup every day? Well, one, right? It'd be that one right there, right? Because everything got backed up every single day. How many tapes would it take to back up if I was using a full plus differential? Two. It would, I would need the Sunday tape plus that Friday tape, two tapes. How many tapes would it take to do a restore Friday afternoon using the full plus incremental? Well, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six tapes to do that. Again, let me go through this one more time. When people are pounding on the server room door, now is not the time to say, Wait, is this the Tuesday tape or is this the Wednesday tape? Doc, got it. Okay. It's so much easier. You're going to have to do a full. Okay. You're either one. You're going to have to do that one. So if you're trying to minimize the amount of effort it takes to do a backup, you would choose this one, the full plus incremental. But if you're trying to maximize, maximize? You're trying to minimize the amount of effort it takes to do a restore, then you would do the exact opposite. You would do the full backup every day. We learned our lesson. 
we went and said, screw this, we are not doing, and we didn't do any differential, any backup uh, incrementals at all. We went full backups, full blown, every single backup, because we wanted to maximize the ability to do a uh, restore. We weren't trying to make the backup more efficient. We were trying to make the restore more efficient. Okay. I've said that several times, haven't I? Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> so tape strategy. Tape. I'm using the word tape uh, in a general sense as media. Basically, you have to rotate the media. Like if you're using disc, don't use the same disc every single time. Because what happens if you're halfway through the disc and the disc failed? Right? Don't don't do that. Um, make for this to work really really well to minimize the amount of time it takes to do a restore. You really ought to be able to fix it so that the that the full backup fits on one media. In other words, if you have to use multiple tapes to be able to come up with the, that full backup, that that just slows you down. So we bought tape backups and or discs, and removable hard drives and things to that made sure. We had enough storage capacity, like in a, a NAS box, that we could do a full backup on a single P one media. We used to have this thing called a tape library. It was a little robotic control thing. It, looked, it was actually kind of fun to watch. You know, you had a tape dive. A little arm would come up and grab a tape. And put the tape in, take the tape out, grab the next tape. That thing never worked. God almighty. Put you this way. I didn't say it never worked. If there was going to be a backup failure and we got in the next morning, it was pretty much more guaranteed that the problem was going to be the little robotic tape library didn't do its thing. Okay, I'm just saying. So we said, man, get rid of that stuff. Let's just fix it so it all fits on one tape. Okay, cool. All right. And then, of course, uh, you probably need, if you're having like a tape, if you're using a tape drive, don't you just have one? For God's sake, what happens if it fails? Right? Have a second. You're going to need duplicates of these things. Preferably off-site. And then where do you store the, the media? I mean, it's not enough that you would like have a removable hard drive for your tape backup, but if you just store it in the corner of your desk or in a filing cabinet in your you know in a cube where anybody could walk up and steal the, the tape or the disk and have basically you have access to everything on your server if they took it home. Right? So you need security on these things. Okay. And one more time, what's wrong with using cloud uh, backup for a server? Eh, just takes too dang long. Remember, I don't want people pounding on the door. I want this thing to go quick, right? Okay, just saying. All right, the next thing on page 236 is in the book. Yay! It talks about RAID. Okay, RAID is, it used to be, um, redundant array of inexpensive disks. Ha, ha, ha. And now they've changed it to, uh, redundant array of independent disks. Okay, so here this thing works. So, array zero, what that basically means is I have, uh, so, okay, here's typically the way I set up servers, okay, back in the day. Um, let's say that I needed, like, I'm making this up, I need 512 meg, uh, gig rather, 512 gig for my C drive. So what I did is I, I grabbed two 512s and bolted them together in a, in a RAID 1. And a RAID 1 means everything gets written to this disk also gets written to this disk. So I don't gain any capacity. You know, I don't get a terabyte out of it, right? So RAID 1 just basically says everything written to here is redundantly written over here. And that way, if my one of my disks failed, quite frankly, I'd probably not even notice. Well, that's not true. The alarms would go off saying, hey, you had a disk failure, but the machine would continue to run at essentially the same speed and capacity it did before. Okay? All right. So RAID 0 is about speed. I take two disks and I bolt them together like this, and I, I get more capacity. Okay? So I take two uh, one terabyte drives, and I bolt them together, and I get two terabytes of storage. Yay! It's pretty cool. RAID 1, when I bolt two terabyte drives together, I get one capacity, one terabyte of storage, because I'm duplicating. Now, RAID 0 is about speed, but the problem here is what happens is um, half of the... Mary had a little lamb, so Mary had a get written to this disk, and little lamb got written to that disk. It split the message into chunks. Half of it written to one disk, half of it written to the other disk. Now, the problem with RAID 0... First of all, RAID 0 is fantastic. It's great. It's fast. 
So if you're after speed, woohoo! But can you imagine if you lost either one of the discs, then you lost everything. So the RAID 0 actually, actually makes things less safe. Okay? RAID 0 makes them less, more susceptible to failure than if you just left it alone on a single drive. Okay, cool. So, uh, let's talk about this in kind of a practical point of view. Um, let's, I'm going to pop open a, a little uh, notepad here. Okay, here we go. Come on. Hey. All right, here we go. So, let's assume that I have, I don't know, um, uh, I have four disks at one TB each. Okay, cool. So, if I had that in a RAID, RAID 0, that would be 4 times 1 is equal to 4 terabytes of storage. Okay, that makes sense? Cool. If I had a RAID 1, RAID 1 is all about redundancy. So, I'd have 4 times, actually, I would just have since all these are just going to have duplicates of each other, right? One would just have a duplicate copy, duplicate copy, duplicate copy, duplicate copy. Um, it's going to end up with one terabyte of storage because it's just, a, it's just the size of that one disk. Okay? So one of them is RAID zeros, you add them all together. RAID one is just pick the size of one of them, that's it. And then RAID five, because first of all, RAID zero kind of makes sense in some scenarios, but not many. I don't use RAID 0. RAID 1, I typically just use that with two disks. I don't ever do it with four like I have done here. So typically two disks for a RAID 0, and that kind of makes sense. But you can kind of sort of see this is not, not really all that scalable, right? RAID 1? I mean, really, if I wanted to have 15 terabytes of data or 30 terabytes of data, I would have to have, you know, 60 disks to be able to pull that off. That is not very scalable, right? So I don't like that. So I'm, I'm a, this, this is kind of confusing. So let's do four disks at one. Let's just say um, two disks. I don't want to confuse you. One terabyte. Okay. So RAID 5, the way you calculate that is you take the number of disks. Okay. So let's say I have five disks minus one times the size. Okay, so in this case, a RAID 5 would be four times one is equal to four terabytes. Okay, so how do you calculate RAID 0? Easy, add them all together. How do you calculate a RAID 1? Typically, there's only two drives involved. But if it's two drives, it's the size of one of them. If it's four drives, it's still the size of one of them. If it's 18 drives, it's still the size of one of them, which is why RAID 1 doesn't make much sense in scale. But a RAID 5 is however many disks you have minus one of the disks. And that, so if I have 10 disks, that would be nine terabytes of data. So 10 disks minus one times the size of the disk. And that tells you how many there are. Okay, kind of makes sense. <clears throat> Think maybe there's going to be some test questions coming out of that? Okay. Page 238, the disaster recovery plan. Mostly it's the same as the incident recovery plan. You know, priorities, roles, responsibilities, you know, the call-out roster, documenting the disaster, and mitigating whatever impact it is. You know, recovery operations, there's really not, you really can't plan too many. I mean, the roof came off is a, a typical thing that you would do for a recovery operation, but I would rather doubt you're going to have a plan that says do the following if the roof, you know, comes off. Mostly you're going to, you know, you're going to contact some maintenance person or architect, somebody who says, well, we're going to climb up on the roof with some plastic sheeting and duct tape, you know, that kind of stuff, right? Okay. Uh, page 239, you talk about the business continuity plan again. Hey, we're coming up on the 15 minute mark. This is probably a good place to stop for that.